In the previous video, Sundials and Longitude, we reviewed two of the three time corrections needed to convert sundial time to clock time. Those were daylight saving time and a value for our position of longitude within the time zone. This video explains the third correction, the equation of time. If the Earth's orbit around the Sun were a perfect circle and the Earth's axis at a right angle to that orbit, all days would be exactly 24 hours long. Day and night would also be equal in length, and we would have no seasons. But the reality is that the Earth's orbit is a slight ellipse, the Sun being located off-center, and that the axis of the Earth is tilted relative to that orbit at about 23.4 degrees. These two variations are called eccentricity and obliquity. They each cause slight daily variations in the length of the day that accumulate through the year. Using only solar time or local apparent time, our days are 24 hours long, on average, whereas clocks are able to keep a steady 24-hour cycle. The equation of time gives us the daily difference we need to equate the two. In that elliptical orbit, when the Earth is nearest the Sun on January 3rd, it is called perihelion. When it is farthest away on July 4th, it is called aphelion. Those dates, by the way, will vary a bit year to year. This graph reflects that elliptical orbit around the Sun, its eccentricity. The months of the year form the horizontal axis of the graph. We can see the dates of perihelion and aphelion. The vertical axis indicates the daily change in minutes with zero as the baseline. We can see that the slight daily differences will accumulate to a plus or minus value of about 7.5 minutes, and that it returns to zero at aphelion and perihelion. That is caused by the daily difference in the Earth's speed as it orbits the Sun. It moves faster, a shorter day, as it gets closer to the Sun, and slower, a longer day, when it is further away. That is Kepler's second law of planetary motion. Through its orbit, the Earth's axis has a constant angle of tilt. That affects its surface exposure to the Sun and the length of daylight hours. This creates the seasons. That tilt relative to the Sun is at its maximum at the two solstices and at minimum at the two equinoxes when the axis is parallel to the Sun. This graph reflects that daily impact of the Earth's tilt relative to our orbit, its obliquity. The value is zero at the equinoxes and solstices, but daily variations will accumulate in between. Those peaks are about 9.87 minutes. Individually, these two graphs are relatively symmetrical, but together we see that they're out of sync with one another. We could use them as two separate time corrections, but their values have traditionally been merged into one graph. Plotting one of these combined points, for example, here we would have about minus 10 for obliquity and plus 6.5 for eccentricity, so their combined value would be minus 3.5 for that day. Continuing to merge those values, we would create a new graph, the red line here, and that is the equation of time. We could also transfer the equinoxes and solstices onto this line. We see that the equation of time no longer has symmetry. Its highs and lows are as much as plus 14.4 and minus 16.4 minutes. You might see an inverted version of this equation of time if you were adjusting clock time to match sundial time. But here, we're adjusting sundial to match clock. You might also see those values tabulated or graphed in different ways, including this antique table version. But I think this graphic version is the one we see used most often. To demonstrate how to use it, let's assume that it is August 15th. We would look up to where that date intersects with the curve. We would then look to the left and see that the value for that day is about plus four minutes. A direct reading of the sundial will give us what is called local apparent time, 11 o'clock in this example. Adding that plus four minute value from the equation of time will give us 1104 for what is called local mean time. If we were living in the 17 and 1800s, we would use this to match our sundial to clock time. This was before the advent of standard time in the late 1800s. Ironically, back then, you might actually use the equation of time to set your clock to match sundial time. 
Many antiqued pendulum clocks have an equation of time still pasted inside their cabinets. When winding the clock, you might make a time correction to match the sundial for that day. Taking time correction a step further to get standard time, we would apply the two time corrections explained in the previous video. Starting with 11.04 local mean time, add 60 minutes for daylight saving time, subtract 13 minutes for our longitude within the time zone, and arrive at 11.51 standard time. That is compared to the original direct sundial reading of 11 o'clock local apparent time. It should be noted that the equation of time is not a constant value. This diagram from the Royal Astronomical Society illustrates that point. We can see how it shifts slowly through the millennia. That is because the Earth's obliquity and eccentricity are constantly shifting within their respective 41,000 and 100,000 year cycles. That being said, the graph as engraved on these sundials will serve us well for about 100 years. And so, we now have the three time corrections needed to convert sundial time to clock time. Thanks for exploring the equation of time with me, and you might consider viewing some of my other related sundial videos.